started a few weeks ago a series um, entitled uh, The Beauty of Adversity, because I, I have been going through some, some health things that was unfamiliar to me. I had been in the hospital, I had surgery for the first time in my life, uh, I couldn't walk, I couldn't use my hands, uh, and it was a very challenging time for me, and I had never experienced anything like that in my life. And I, the more I thought about it, right, the more I realized how I got through it was because I allowed that adversity to push me closer to God as opposed to pushing me further away from God. And oftentimes, when hard times come, like it's easy to praise God when everything's good, like when you feel good in your body. You got money in your pocket, a little money in the bank. You have to know the little in your pocket and in the bank. Your credit score ain't going down. It ain't going up, but it ain't going down. Right? Everything on the job is copacetic. It's easy to praise God when everything looks good, when everything is good. But what about when things get tough? And we have to learn how to praise God through tough times because they're coming. Mm -hmm. They're unavoidable. So if nobody's telling us or teaching us or preparing us for how to navigate through rough waters, what do we do when they come? We run back to what's familiar. Right. Ooh. Just fold, cross your legs. I'm gonna get some toes today. <laughs> I'm gonna get some, right? We run to what's familiar. If I was a drinker, you know, when things got tough and I used to go to the bottle, that's what I'm liable to run back to. If I was a smoker, I used to be both, by the way, but you know, praise God. <laughs> but if that's what you did, when things get tough, that's what you do. So we gotta learn how to, how to trust God, how to stay faithful to God when times are tough. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about the children of Israel, right? Because it's a story that most people know. So I'm gonna give you just a quick backdrop. So the children of Israel, God's chosen people were suffering, right? They were in captivity by their own doing. I, just, just for the record. As well as their own doing. But they were in captivity in Egypt, and God had said that he was going to deliver them. Now, the one thing, if you've been here over the last couple of weeks, not the last couple, but the last several weeks, I started talking about when I started this is, listen, if, if you're not a believer, excuse me for a second, because this applies to believers. But if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, in order for Satan to try you or to test you, he has to get permission from God. That being said, then we know that no matter what we're going through, God is aware of it, and he's in control of it. And he can stop it whenever he wants now, the problem for most of us is when we're going through something, it seems like God don't know. It seems like God don't care. And we wonder why in the world is it happening so long. <clears throat> so it's easy to hear that when everything's okay. But the, the fact of the matter is, when I'm going through something, I want God to come through right away. I want to stick my prayer in the microwave, and I want to press one, and I want to pull it out with a tick, 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 and I want God to deliver me. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, I'm going to just talk to myself. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we want. When we decide to talk to God, we want God to be listening, and we don't want him to be paying nobody else no attention, and we want him to be moving. <laughs> Not my mother, <laughs> father. <laughs> <laughs> but it's me. <laughs> we finally decide to pray. We want God's attention. But what if, and I'm just, I'm just bringing up the speed, what if God allowed you to go through some of these adversities just so he could prove how much you loved him? Uh-oh. Let me just get on in there. Let me get on in there. The door's open. Right? When you reach a certain level of maturity, you learn love is more than what somebody says. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're young and silly, Somebody can tell you they love you and you just melt. You just all you want is them to say that they love you. You even lead them into it. And when they say it, you're gone. You're like jello in their hand. 
when you get a little wiser, you learn that love is an action. And if you never hear it, you can see it. And if you can see it, you can feel it. And if you can feel it, you're content. Right? So with God, there comes a point that God expects you to show that you love him. Because he showed he loved you. Right? Amen. God showed he loved you. He showed that he believed in you. So at some point, it's only reasonable expectation that he's going to expect you to show what? You love him too. Mm -hmm. Right? A one-sided relationship is no good. Who likes that? Got to be under 12. <laughs> right? Nobody wants to pour into something and never get poured back into. Right? But, but the one thing that makes adversity such a challenge is we feel like we don't have any control. Like me personally, when I was in the hospital, it drove me crazy. Right? And I realized it wasn't just because I didn't want to be in a hospital. Well, I didn't want to be in a hospital. But, but I'm used to being in control. My wife and I would go to Sam's and I couldn't pick up the Gatorade. That bothered me. I couldn't carry a case of water in the house. That bothered me. I'm used to being in control. I had to have help putting on my pants and have help dressing myself, that bothered me because I'm used to being in control. And so a lot of times when things in our life turn to such a place that we don't know what to do next, it's frustrating because we're used to being in control. Like for as long as we can remember, we've been saying what? We grown. Mm -hmm. We couldn't wait to say it. Some of us, it's the worst day of our lives. And that's the day we got put out. I'm grown. And the day since the day you thought you were grown, you realized what being grown meant. And you didn't know you had the rest of your life to be grown. It's called working and paying bills. <laughs> Woo! If I could go back in time. Right now. Just let me not grow up. <laughs> Just let me not grow up. I've been spending the rest of 40, 50 years working and paying bills. I trade that back in for going in the refrigerator. <laughs> then somebody else put the food in there. Look how y'all look. See? But isn't that the actual definition of faith? Living by faith is trusting what you don't see over what you do see. Mm -hmm. The problem is you have to believe what you don't see more than you believe what you do see. But if you don't even have it to believe in, what you see dominates your life. So the hard time comes, you think this is how it ends. When tragedy happens, you think there's no hope. And it's one thing to cry without hope, and it's another thing to cry and stand in faith and know that even through these tears, God got my back. And even though it's tough right now, I'm going to live to see another day. And the next day is going to be better than the last day. Mm -hmm. So I can stand with tears in my eyes as long as I'm standing by faith. As long as I know I got a word to stand on, because God's not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should pit, repent. But if all I got is my trouble, I got nothing but trouble. Mm -hmm. But if I got faith in the word of God, then I got something I can rely on. So we take for granted this, this thing that happened between God and the children of Israel. And, and I'm, 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 I, just, I just want to share something with you this morning because it's, it's, it's vitally important, right? It's vitally important. There's more than one problem that occurs when you don't trust God, when I don't trust God. Look, some of y'all saw me last week. Still look like I was on death door. I thought I was doing good. I got home, I had so many people saying how bad I looked. How sorry they felt for me. I saw a dog. I was doing pretty good last week. I wasn't, but I thought I was faking it. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't faking it pretty good. I got home and I said, man, woo, we had to get you out of there, champ. You couldn't do it no more. <laughs> you was at your limit. Come on, baby. And I, I bet you I don't look like I did last week. No. And I know I don't because I don't feel like I did mm -hmm. last week because when I got home, I got a breakthrough. Amen. I'm telling you, too. I'm telling you, too. I had to not come out of my stomach like this last week. I couldn't even put these pants on last week. Am I lying? 
She tried to get me to wear this suit last week. I couldn't put the pants up. <laughs> it's a true story. There was my stomach, it was a knot coming out of my stomach like this. I was on the phone with my wife and my daughter. I was like, I was just don't leave me. They thought I was, thought I was giving them my will. <laughs> I was like, just don't leave me. And I got a breakthrough and all of a sudden my stomach just started going down and down and down. I told my wife, I was like, oh my God, look at this. It's a miracle. I'm telling you, it's a miracle. It happened last week. church acting still, boy. I wish to God I had just a little bit of rhythm. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't really Caucasian on the inside, I'd show y'all how to praise the Lord. <laughs> i show y'all how to praise the Lord. Boy, I danced. I just knew I can't. Then that would be a miracle. <laughs> Kayla, take us to Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Sometimes in the spirit, I'm doing it, but in real life, I know I ain't. I want to. Listen. Listen. I, I personally didn't do a New Year's Eve service this year because I wanted to do something different. The Lord told me, he said, this year really is going to be something special. Yes, it is. Amen. He said, it really is going to be something special. He said, that's why when you look around, everywhere you look, people are catching pure hell. Mm. It's, he said, it's because this is the moment they've been waiting for. Mm. Jesus. But I don't want you to get excited just because the calendar changed. Mm -hmm. I want you to get excited because you decided you were going to change. Yeah. Just do something different and then expect something different. Yes. So, so God promises deliverance, right? And 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 and, and the, the reference which I want I want I want to ask Kelly to pull up, but but when the prayers of the Israelites reached God's ear, he said to Moses, I hear them and I acknowledge their situation. See, just because you don't see God moving doesn't mean he isn't moving. Right? Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. I'm telling you, it's happening. You just got to decide whether or not you're going to believe it. But for the Israelites, the word of God wasn't enough. God said, I'm going to deliver you out of Egypt, and I'm going to take you into a land that I promised to give you. I promised to your forefathers that I would give you. This land is flowing with milk and honey. In other words, I'm going to take you out of a bad place and put you in a good place. God said, I'm going to do it. You just got to trust me. Let me read through this really quickly because uh, I just want to get to a point. So, now, the problem with the people is they complain the whole way. You ever been on a trip with somebody? Well, not even a trip. You ever, mm -hmm. Let me not make y'all fall out here. You ever been in a house with somebody? <laughs> and they just seem like they just won't stop complaining. Now, I don't believe in pretending like everything's okay, but I don't think complaining gonna change nothing. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can't play, pray, and complain. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the problem with the Israelites is every step of the way they complain. Every time they faced adversity, they said, We're going back to Egypt. I'd rather go back to what I know than to trust God to take me what's un to what's unfamiliar. And listen, for everybody in here with a dream and with a plan in your mind, is something you think that you believe in God do for you, you got to prep for it. You got to get ready for it. You can't go from one level to the next level and not have no idea what's waiting on that level. You got to get ready for it. If you, if you want to start acting like it, it don't matter that everybody else trying to figure out why you're acting like that. Because you could be acting worse. <laughs> so I'd rather act like what I want to become than act like what I used to be. But every time they face adversity, they say, we're going back to Egypt. Why would you bring us out here in this desert? Were there not enough graves in Egypt? Because they just died in Egypt. Where's the meat? We ain't no meat. Remember we had all that fish in Egypt? Where's the water? We're going to die of thirst. Why would you do this to us? And they wanted to stone Moses to death. And 
And over and over and over and over they complained. And every time God gave them a miracle, they complained again. Let me show you something. Let's try something. What if I said I felt led to buy somebody a tank of gas, so I have in my pocket a $50 gift card for somebody a tank of gas? Who would believe that? Y'all know how this goes. Yeah. Y'all know how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First one here. First one here. First one here. That's all right. First one here. That's all right. Can't help the last one. <laughs> so watch this. Watch this though. Watch this. There's, there's a purpose of that. Shakia, you you remind me of Adrian. Well, I just I wish there was a pity prize, but just I was getting it for him. I know, but I'm just saying half faith don't do. She was back there just walking that way instead of walking this way. <laughs> Got to go lateral, honey. Now you got to go lateral. <laughs> Let me ask you something, though. This is this is serious. Why did you come down here since you since you came down? Why did you come down here? Uh, well, what, what, what made you what made you come? Because mm -hmm. I believe that you had it. You believe I had it. Mm -hmm. Alright, stay with me. He believed I had it. Mm -hmm. And you believe what? I was gonna get it. If you came down, you were gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Why did you believe that? This the key. This the key. Watch this. He said he believed I had it because I got it. Ain't no need to pretend. He believed I would have gave it to him if he came down here. But all that, both of those stem from him having to believe what? God. Faith. Huh? Faith in God. Yeah, he had faith, but he what? He seen me do it before. That's right. Yep. He's seen me do it before. What do you think I'm going with that? Mm -hmm. So with God, there's no difference. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you see? You see? You see? Everybody in here who knows me knows. And I'm really disappointed in how slow you move. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. Because I don't sell no tickets. If I say it, I'm going to do it. And you know that because you've seen me do it before. Now, some of you proud. I don't need your $50. Well, sit on it. <laughs> I didn't beg you to come here and take my money. I'm just telling you, I'm just doing what I feel led to do. But if you've seen God do it before, what makes this so different? And let me tell you about let me let me tell you about the adversity, and I'm gonna get back to this. So what I was dealing with last week and the week before happened in the same place that I started feeling sick when I had to go to the hospital. Come on, baby. Come on. And I was feeling the same symptom. And I said, I want to tell my wife. I feel so sorry for her. She's been through enough with me. Mm. But something ain't right. I feel like I swallowed a baseball. Mm. And every time I bend, I feel it. And I gotta tell her. God, I can't hide it from her. And I told her, bless her heart, she didn't say a word. She just tried to keep her face straight. <laughs> she tried to keep it straight. She, she ain't got a good poker face. She tried to keep it straight. <laughs> she was encouraging me, maybe it's just, you know, maybe you just ain't through healing, and maybe it's just, you know, you're rushing it, and maybe it's just, you know, she was trying to say all the right things. But something wasn't right. And I thought, God, am I going to go through the same thing again? And I just reminded myself, well, you brought me through it before. You bring it through, bring it through it again. Amen. That's why I pushed myself to church. I kept doing the same thing I've been doing because I just had to trust God. If I got to go through it again, then I got to go. Doesn't mean I want to, but if I got to, so be it. As long as I know God is with me. Amen. So let me get to this. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. All and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt. I think I heard that somewhere before. If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord 
brought us to this land to fall by the sword. Now, they have gone into Canaan, right? Moses sent the spies just to go see if what God said is true. Right? You ever drive by a neighborhood you know you can't afford to live in and say, one of these houses got to be mine. Look how you're looking at me. Well, I don't want to play like that. Well, I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing. Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm not. Why should it always be for somebody else? My father is the king of kings. If I don't know that, who's going to know it? See, some of y'all think too little of yourself. Well, I don't need all that. Well, suit yourself. I do. I, I, I do. I do. What's the dealership? It's like a smorgasbord. Just, just pick what you want. Just pick what you want. I had one thing in mind. My wife was all way out on me. <laughs> way over here somewhere. Because I know who I am. Don't be mad at me. You don't know who you are. Why has the Lord brought us in this land to fall by the, and, and, to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said, the people that over there look so big and so strong and so powerful, there's no way we can defeat those people even though God had gave them a promise. So some of y'all are saying, I really believe I can do this. I think I got it inside of me to go there, but I'm not so sure I got what it takes. So you second guess yourself. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. In other words, let's kill the pastor and find another church. Mm -hmm. Oh, that ain't what it said. <laughs> I'll call the cops on you. <laughs> I'll call the cops on you. <laughs> then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. I'm almost there. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Now, listen, I don't, I don't, you know, God ain't like playing bingo. Remember how you used to play bingo? Not bingo, bingo. Bingo, bingo. Mm -hmm. Like riding down the car, talking about bingo, riding shit up. God ain't like that. If God ain't no genie. You can just rub the Bible and get all kinds of stuff. God don't work that way. But if God made you a promise, you can hold him too. Mm -hmm. Just because you're tired of your car breaking down don't mean you get a new car. Just because your landlord don't want to fix your stuff when it breaks in your apartment doesn't mean you get a house. But if you know that the Bible says every believer should have at least one acre of land in a house, you can hold God to that. Look how y'all look. Where is that in the Bible? <laughs> I didn't know that was in there. And you still don't. You got to take my word for it. <laughs> but, but these two guys said, hey, wait a minute. God said we can do this. But the other ten said, nope, uh-uh. We ain't going over there. We're going to kill Moses. We're going back to Egypt because at least over there we knew what we was getting. I ain't going to mess with y'all today about that. You know what you're getting. Stand with what's familiar because you know what it is. I'm, 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 I did that letter to you last week. I'm not going to do you like that this week. But shame on you. Shame on you if you're scared to try something new. Okay, I'm losing some of you. I'm losing some of you. But this, this is what I know. I know. And I, look what it's doing for you. Look what he's doing for you. He said, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. I'm almost where I want to be. And the congregation said, stone them with stone. Now the glory of the Lord, God, dog, don't you love people, man? I just want to go back there and stone them. Stone them. 
Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Here we go. I'm going to stop right at 11 and 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make you a great nation, greater and mightier than they. And I'm going to start with that because I'm going to show you some, how God distinguishes now these two groups. So God is upset. God is upset because he said, listen, how long do I have to contend with children who don't trust me as their father? Who don't believe that I provide for them? Who don't believe that if I said it, I would do it? If I spoke it, I would bring it to pass. If they don't trust me, then forget it. I'll cut them off. But I'll make you a great nation greater than them. Why? Because I'm not going to hold you accountable for what their disbelief means. So you can't get mad because one person decides to trust God and God bless them. And you know your faith is as shaky as a 95-year-old man on Walker. And you want God to do the same for you. You can't be mad at that. Because the problem is God's mad with you. God don't get mad. Yes, he does. He says, I'll just I will disinherit them and strike them with the pestilence. And Moses had to go and pray for them. Moses said, God, look, Lord, don't do it. Don't do it. Because all the people in Egypt, they know you own, you brought these people out of here and you promised where you were going to take them. And if you don't take them, the people will think you never could. So do it for your own self, Lord, even if you don't do it for them. And God said, I'll do it for my own self, but I ain't doing it for them. And they didn't get in. Did somebody get in? Yes. Did they get in? No. God's promise is true. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it won't happen. And if it don't happen for you, it ain't because God ain't faithful. It's because you're not faithful. You got to be able to trust God better than you can do anything else. You know how some of us used to lie? You know, so, let me just. Come on with it, bitch. Come on. Hmm. I thought before I got saved, I was a halfway decent guy. I really did. I wasn't no maliciously mean person, but lie? Well, I could lie. I could lie. I mean, I could string them together. I could string them together. I mean, I could lie. I was good at it, too. Feel some kindred spirits in here. <laughs> but at some point, if you don't decide, you and you alone are going to trust God. Because at the end of the day, there's not a person in here that don't need it. And you can't always count on your mama. And your grandma, and your daddy, and your grand. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my mama to pray for me. Now my mama needs prayer. Mm. I can't wait to tell her how she acted worse than I was. <laughs> I don't want to be in the hospital. But she had nerve to preach to me when I was in there. <laughs> I can't wait to wash her face with it. <laughs> but if you don't decide, you're gonna trust God for yourself. You're going to find yourself disconnected from God. Because the Bible says, Hebrews 11, 6. Will you pull it up for me? That's because they, they might not believe. They think I'm still got a lion spirit in me. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them think I'm still got that lion demon on me. Okay. Can y'all see that? But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So now, instead of these people marching into what their destiny was, now they're marching in the desert waiting to die off for that lack of faith. God said, so for one year, for every day, they spied out the land and still chose not to leave, they're going to wander in that desert. And they wandered aimlessly in the desert until that whole generation died off. And their children went in. 
And they like to do it too. Because, you know, we'll, you know, you know, we put it in them. Then you want to beat it out of them. All right, some of y'all didn't touch it. Some of y'all didn't touch it. Hey, kids only know when they talk. But they ain't learned from me. Well, you ought to watch who you have them around. You learn from somebody. All they know is what you teach them. My job is to teach you how to trust God. So that you stay connected to God and see God do what nobody else could do. All the people who don't think you're able need to be made alive. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is for you to trust God. Mm -hmm. For all the things that thought they were going to take you down and keep you down need to be made alive. The only way for that to happen is for you to trust God. But for them the word wasn't enough. But for us it's got to be enough. It's got to be enough. It's got to be enough. We got to decide. Is, is it or isn't it? Is the word of God enough? Let me give you an example that you can see. You know, some of you get somebody who's the best somebody you ever had in your life. And then, then you look at everybody who ain't your body and you want that body. attracted to you only when you got somebody. When you have nobody, nobody wanted you. I might need another one of these. Look here. When you was broke, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying past tense in, as an act of faith for some of them. And nobody wouldn't give you the time of day. And you get blessed, and that seems like everybody want a piece. You got to be smarter than that. You got to be smarter than that. It can't come no finer than my wife to me. Because she's been with me at my worst. They can't, they, they can't, God ain't built one that I want more than her. No matter how you put it together. And she might have a fine brown frame. She can't touch this one over here. Because she's been with me at my worst. Right? She's been with me at my worst. So she should be with me when I'm at my best. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, some of us, God's just not enough. We got God, but we want this too. We got God, but we want that too. And sometimes our pursuit of the things we want leads us away from God. Because we want those things more than we want God. And when you decide, make up your mind you want God, he'll give you all the things you want. That's right. He'll even give you somebody that'll put up with you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not easy to live with. I see my man, and I am my man, but I'm not easy to live with. I'm, I'm Oceans call me one way. I like things one way. Don't deviate. Don't change. Just let me go one way. <laughs> and I don't know how that's interpreted to some people. I'm just saying, I, you know, I ain't everybody's cup of tea. But I got mine. So y'all better stay in church. <laughs> But I just want you to see, and I'm, I'm, I'm done. I just want you to see this conversation between God and Moses about the children of Israel. Just like I showed you God and Satan talking about Job. God is banking on those who say they believe him to prove that they believe him. So, if I strike you with adversity, so on your car you're going to work. You're going to fall apart, you're going to come unglued. So your boss got a demon. Every boss got a demon in him. <laughs> I ain't met a boss yet that didn't have a demon in him. <laughs> and I'm somebody's boss. <laughs> I don't know what that says, but I just said it. <laughs> it ain't lying. I'm, I'm on that. I'm on I ain't never met a boss that didn't have. Let me stop saying that. Listen, you're going to have trouble. 
Sometimes the money just don't add up. It doesn't mean God is not a provider. Mm -hmm. right. right? But if you don't know what Jehovah Jireh means, you're living it in your knowledge of God being a provider. My grandchildren don't call me Papa. They don't call me father or daddy. They call me granddaddy. And in their eyes, they see unlimited possibilities. And they should. My kids didn't have unlimited possibilities. So what? That's life. Right? But if, if my money isn't right, I got to go to God as a provider God. Not as a healer. As a provider. Just this aspect of you, this, this one aspect of you, this, the, the fact that you are a provider by nature, that's what I want to be involved with. When I was in the hospital, I was calling out Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals us. I, just, just, the, just the facet of God that is a healer. Right? We're all over the place. I ain't praying for the sick and shut in when I'm sick and shut in. <laughs> I don't mean that derogatory, I'm just saying. Praying for money when you ain't got no help. If you ain't got no help, money don't matter. He never really been sick before. When you ever get really get sick, it ain't talking about no COVID. I'm talking about really sick. You realize money ain't everything. So God is saying, you know what? I just, I just cut them off. I'm not going to fool with them. I'm not going to fool with them. I gave them meat when they asked for meat. I gave them water when they asked for water. I followed them. I led them by a cloud in the day and fire at night so they would know where they were going and they still ain't happy. I gave them food from heaven. When they woke up in the morning, they went outside and there was food on the ground. I produced. It still wasn't enough for them. So I'm done. If they don't want to believe me, I can't force them. They have free will. So when we sing a song that says, he waited for me, somebody ought to be giving him praise, because he did. Because none of us would be here today if God didn't. Because mm -hmm. God knows how flaky we are. We own today and off tomorrow, hot today and cold tomorrow, and love today and hate tomorrow. <coughs> Woo, you better find somebody to stick with them. Some of you, flaky. <laughs> us, some of us. <laughs> Some of us flaky, man. You better find somebody who can put up with you because most of us is something. Most of us are something, but I'm just telling you, if you think this is a game, you're sadly mistaken. And God was about to cut them off, disinherit them. Moses went to bat on their behalf. He said, God, don't do it. You're not, you're not, you're not a liar, man. You, you don't lie. You say you're going to take those people and you got to do it. Because they done told these other people, you said it. Now I'm going to end with this. If you really want to test, and not test, but test and prove the word of God, tell somebody what you believe. Uh-oh, oh, 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 you don't want to do that? I just got to the point, I believe in myself. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. So why am I telling you that? Why, why would I tell you, if you're trusting God for something God said, not just, I want a new house. Look, where does the Bible say you can have a house? Find that. Because God don't respond to need. God responds to the word. Faith. In the word. But why would I tell you to tell somebody else? I believe, I'm believing God to heal me. Why would I tell somebody else that? Look what happened to Joseph. And if you know the Bible, you're like, oh, you got a point. Why are you telling us that then? That didn't work out for Joseph at all. Don't be square. You shout it out like it's a Bible study. Why would I tell you, if you really trust in God, if you want to see God do something, tell somebody else. He's speaking, he's speaking it out in the universe. Speaking it out. Yeah, speaking out here. Mm. Mm. I don't like that universe stuff. That's too wishy watch. I won't be specific. I'm talking about God and Jesus. I get your point, but I'm just saying, they're going to beat you up. Accountability. Accountability. Because when you tell somebody else, now God is accountable because that's evidence that you believe in. It's one thing for me to say, I believe God is going to heal me. It's another thing for me to tell you, hey, I believe God is going to heal me. Because now you watch it. Mm -hmm. You watch it. God. 
You see? You see? Put it to the test. Because now she's watching. Now one or two things going to happen when she starts watching. Either she's going to believe with me or she's going to believe against me. <laughs> but either way, she's going to be watching. <laughs> right? But now, now I'm putting my faith to the test. Then I tell him. Then I, then, and he tell him, he tell him, can you believe that? He tell my God, I go in here. That big old night of this stuff. Week later, I thought I was going to die. I was down there talking to my daughter like a drug dealer. Oh, bring me this, bring me this, and bring me this. I was putting in my order jacket. Bring me all, bring me all, bring me a good sack. Take care of that. Bring me all the stuff, all the medicine. True story, my wife looked at me and said, you don't need that. You're going to get it anyway. I said, y'all going to get it anyway. <laughs> but I didn't need it. Because God had healed me. Amen. So try. Try. If you believe in God to do something that God said he would do, try it. Don't be scared of people hating on you. I don't want to tell them because they don't, they don't believe in me. No way. So what? Them the ones you ought to tell. Make them sick with it. Choke them with it. They come, can't, you tell them you trust the God, they'll run away from you so fast, you won't ever see that hate coming. Girl, I said, I'm going to trust God. Oh, let me get away from this one. <laughs> can't stand, that's all he needs. Start talking about Jesus. <laughs> that's like loaning money. You want to run somebody away from him? Start talking about Jesus. <laughs> okay, girl, I, I, I'm busy. I, I got something to do. He said, that's what I planned all along. <laughs> all right, I'm done. I just want you to see. Make a choice. Make a choice today. I, 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 I trust God or don't. But be, be for real about it. If you trust him, trust him. And it's not always easy. I'm not saying it is. But you got to make a decision. Either you're going to trust him or you're not. Now when I tell you, let me tell you something. I will be lying to you. I will be lying out of my mouth if I didn't say the way I think about God as a healer has changed. Because I've seen him heal me firsthand. The way I pray about healing has changed. Because I've seen him heal me firsthand. My wife was reminding me, you know, you just had surgery. I was flopping around like I had never even been in the hospital. Cut wide open. The doctor said, you know, I can fillet it. I'm like, I don't like that term. <laughs> It never even occurred to me that I was just running around like I'd never been in the hospital. I was feeling no pain, and God had healed me. And while I was still waiting for the physical manifestation, it, was, it had already happened. You see? You see? So if you're going to be that child, be that child that says, I'm just going to trust God, and I ain't ashamed of it. You drunk, getting from, going from A to B ain't, don't work out so well on your own anyway. Might as well take, take the word with you. All right.